Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiyokpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning. How, How was are you? How it was, was your weekend? It was fantastic. I Very had a good. great time. Africa was shining uh -huh. at the Grammys uh, over the weekend. I yes. know you are rolling your um, eyes. No rolling. Good morning, morning are you? Sad. But morning. guess what? Okay. A woman won. You were voting for a woman. Our polls. I was in a Nigerian woman. In Nigeria, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Well, it's women okay. dominated it's okay. the Grammy Absolutely. Awards. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Women did very well. Absolutely. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Well, let's begin what's trending, shall we? 94 winners have emerged at the 66 Grammy Awards, which took place on Sunday night in Los Angeles, California. South Africa's Tyler won Best Music Performer category for a hit single, Water. And the Grammy goes to Water. Tyler. And I know I'm forgetting some things, but I won a Grammy. Congratulations, Tyler. But the question is out there. They were playing Felao. Oh, well, so Nigeria right. was represented. Nigeria was represented, but that's the big question. Well, joining us now from Los Angeles, California, is a rice correspondent, Shaito Atigari, to give us updates on music's biggest night. Well, I'll say good early morning, Shaito Atigari. How are you? <laughs> Good morning, OG. It's such a wonderful time to hear your voice. It's freezing I know. out here, about 13 degrees in Los Angeles, 2.30 a.m. in the morning. But uh, we, the Grammys are done and yeah. it's exciting times. I heard you talking about why were they playing Fela's Water. Now, that has been a huge topic of conversation following the 66 Grammys because of the cultural representation. What is expected is when the winner is making, her, when the winner is making his or her way to the stage, that the person's uh, song is supposed to be played. And that speaks to whether really and truly the organizers at the Grammys actually know the difference between Fela's water and Tyler's water. But what's important is that Nigeria was represented and Africa was re represented. And we could obviously see Tyler there, yeah. very excited, picking up a Grammy for Best African Performance at the age of 22. Absolutely, Shaito, you said it right. But you know, five Nigerians made the Best African Performance uh, category last week. We put out a poll and Davido was in the lead. Nigerians are disappointed, though, but of course, South Africans are jubilating over uh, Tyler's win uh, for <laughs> that uh, song, Water. What do you think worked to her advantage over the likes of Davido, Burner Boy, Ashake, and our very own Arya Star? Honestly, this doesn't come as a surprise to me. I believe that Nigerians were really carried away with the fact that, you know, of course, Davido had a fantastic year with his album, Timeless. You know, there's some very big songs on there, Unavailable and the rest. But if you look at Tyler's Water, Tyler's Water broke records. In fact, in 56 years, she was the first person from South Africa who actually broke into the Billboard top charts, which is a big deal for Africa. So when you compare Tyler's Water to the rest of the songs in that category, it's no surprise that she, she won. And uh, a, a lot of Nigerians are, of course, upset because, you know, Davido, Bona, Ashake, Olamide, and even Ira Star were on that list and they did not make it. But the truth is, when you have been nominated for a Grammy, it's always going to be in your CV. So going forward, Davido is going to be called, you know, Nomin Grammy nominated uh, artist, Davido. Uh, of course, it's a, it's, it's a huge disappointment, but I believe that Tyler definitely deserved this. And David also went on to, of course, uh, congratulate her and let her know that, you know, there are no, no bad blood, no hard feelings. And Bonaboy, even though he did not win, has now broken the record for the first African artist to have, the, to have that many nominations. He's leading right now with 10 nominations and one win. And of course, he took, he took the stage and he, he showed Nigeria in such a beautiful light and even did his performance with Brandy and 21 Savage. So that was a, a huge comeback for him as well, even though he didn't even win the award. Absolutely. Now, Shaito, we hear that uh, female energy uh, dominated the Grammys with uh, Taylor Swift making history by taking home the album of the year for, you know, her album Midnight and becoming the first artist to win Grammy's top prize for times, Shaito. I mean, amazing. She beat the likes of, you know, uh, male legends Frank Sinatra, Stevie Wonder, Paul, uh, Paul Simon, who had, uh, you know, three. What is your take on Taylor Swift? What? 
Taylor Swift has been breaking a lot of records recently. There's a running joke that Taylor Swift is solely responsible for about 30% of the American economy because she's been hiring a lot of people in her tour. She has a new movie that has just come out and she's just announced her new album. Of course, even though Taylor Swift won, uh, broke this record, I have to also talk about the other women that won record, uh, that won Grammys uh, this year evening we're talking about caesar billy eilish uh miley cyrus and even lana del rey and when taylor swift went on stage she actually went on stage with lana and she did say that it was the happiest moment of her life and she was just so happy to be there and to have broken the record and she also even joked about the fact that because she had collected the uh the win for the best pop vocal that night she had won a total of 13 grammys so she didn't just win break that record of you know four grammys and beating the rest of the guys she's now won 13 Grammys in total so she's inching very very close to breaking Beyonce's record at 22 Grammys in total which brings me to the um, to Jay-Z's speech that he gave tonight while he was collecting the honor on behalf of Dr. Dre he did call out the Grammys as well and said it doesn't make any sense why is it that Beyonce has 22 Grammys and has never won album of the year well it's one of those things where the Grammys have to go back to the drawing board and see how they represent uh, their nominees even better. Well, Shaito, you're doing fantastic kudos out there in Los Angeles. I can see you in the rain. Really proud of you. Thank you for representing Arise News at the Grammys. Well done. Well, I, I also understand that, you know, Burner Boy performed at the Grammys. We'll play that at the end of the show. But also, you know, congratulations are in order. Yeah, the U.S. Mission also, you know, put out a tweet. They wrote, uh, congratulations, Grammy nominees. They have won our hearts with their dedication to their craft, their passion for sure showcasing Nigerian music to the global audience and their exceptional imprint on the music industry. Keep inspiring us with your music. Please, can we put a round of applause for yeah, our Nigerian artists? congratulations, Nigeria. You did absolutely well. We, took our, we did our polls. Just by the way, on our rise, Davido was still in the lead. <laughs> well, all right. Let's take another story. Wigwe University, owned by Group Managing Director of Access Bank Holdings PLC, Herbert Wigwe, has responded to media reports indicating that the university is demanding tuition fees in dollars instead of our local currency, the Naira. The CBN issued a statement over the weekend warning against the use of foreign currency for goods and services in Nigeria, drawing the attention to the CBN Act of 2007, which states inter alia that the currency notes issued by the bank shall be legal tender in Nigeria for the payment of any amount. Uyghur University, in response, affirmed that the institution operates with the utmost respect for national regulations and guidelines, and that contrary to media reports, Home students will pay their tuition fees in Naira. The university went further to state that the decision to list their tuition fees in dollars is a strategic one aligning with their vision to attract a diverse and international student body and that by utilizing U.S. dollars, they aim to provide clarity and transparency for prospective students from around the world. The university added that the influx of international students will boost our local economy by bringing in U.S. dollars, which will gradually reduce capital flight from our economy. I mean, it is good that, you know, the Uyghur University has responded in this manner. Over the weekend, there was the report going out there circulating that, you know, if you go on the Uyghur website, you would see that the tuition fees are quoted in dollars. But like you heard, uh, the university there saying that it is for transparency. And also in that CBN Act, they did say that foreigners can use their dollar cards in Nigeria. If you recall, uh, Dr. Abati, Last year in January, we did see Herbert Wigwe in that video, you know, like encouraging the people of Rivers. If you even look at all of their statements online and what they do for, what they're doing for Nigeria, it is completely amazing. Let us just quickly pull up that video uh, uh, showing Herbert Wigwe in River State at the Wigwe University. I just want to thank all of you, eh? my brothers here. I want to thank all of you, starting with our chairman, you see, eh? for what you people are doing here in Sokoto. For everybody where they here, eh? This now on a project. We're gonna go protect them with anything we wanna get. No university we go there like this. No be for Nigeria or for Africa. Jump! On my children, nothing will compare to this university. 
All right, Herbert, we were there, you know, and also I believe if you go on their website, they do offer scholarships for people of River State. Dr. Abati. Well, a combination of issues here. The first one is that, you know, we had on this program commended uh, Herbert Wigwe of Access Bank uh, for investing in community, mm -hmm. for investing in the future of uh, you know, uh, younger Nigerians who are investing in the education sector, the public sector education system having failed. We have seen a lot of uh, efforts in the, uh, by private sector investors uh, raising the level, whether it's uh, Femi Otedola with Augustine uh, University or Mr. Jim Ovia uh, of Zeni Bank with uh, James Hope College. Uh, yeah, I think that's the name of his school, James Hope College. And now, Herbert Wigwe, you know, with this uh, university in River State. So we see people, you know, building personal legacies, not just for self-glorification, but to add value to society and to contribute to society. Um, what's his name? United Bank for Africa, TOE, Tony Elumelu. He has chosen entrepreneurship. Also to, also to invest in the future. So all of these examples are commendable. Mm -hmm. So you bring in uh, Wigwe University again, I start with that premise. But the second issue that we're dealing with here has to be with the clarification that the university has offered, that the students will not pay fees in dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that only international mm -hmm. students may have to pay in dollars. Well, the reason people raised an eyebrow is because of an increasing dollarization of the Nigerian economy, which, uh, in fact, uh, Femi Falano, SAN, has now taken up as a matter for litigation, challenging the Central Bank of Nigeria for failing in its uh, duties to enforce the value of the Naira as legal tender mm -hmm. within the purview of Section 15, Section 16, and Section 20 of the CBN Act of 2007. And the argument in that case, which has been filed at the Federal High Court here in Lagos uh, by Fumi Falano, SAM, you know, it's a husband and wife uh, uh, senior advocate, uh, you know, arrangement. You know, the, the argument is that the Naira is the uh, legal tender here mm -hmm. and that the law must be respected. And you devalue the Naira as a store of value. If people are collecting school fees in, uh, in uh, dollar, if they are collecting rent, in, uh, uh, in dollar. Well, since uh, as far back as 2015, the Central Bank of Nigeria had issued a circular saying that, look, the Naira uh, is a legal tender. Nobody should dollarize the economy. Well, the truth of the matter is that, that uh, the value of the Naira as the legal tender in this economy has not been enforced. There are even government departments that are collecting uh, 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 you know, uh, charges in dollar. They say it's because they are involved in international business. And there are some of those luxury shops that uh, people like uh, Ojinika, you know, patronize, <laughs> where you buy in dollars. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't patronize those people. Uh, you don't go to luxury it's stores? It's against the law. So where do you get the luxury dollars. items not, you wear from? I uh, Don't ask me that <laughs> question. They sell luxury <laughs> items It's Atalaba. against the law. <laughs> <laughs> I will not pay in dollars. <laughs> but you know that luxury <laughs> items are sold, yes. you know, in uh, foreign currency. So right. the whole idea, the whole idea of it is that look, we have you can save the naira by strengthening Absolutely. it, by respecting it Absolutely. as a store of value, Absolutely. which is the original function of money. That is it. You know, so that, that's that's just the point. Yeah, you recall, but the clarification like, yeah. by Wigwe University is, is, is makes sense. Perfectly in order. Well, let's take another story. The Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria has responded to a viral video over the weekend which captured the sudden power outage at the Martala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. The incident left travelers in the dark for three minutes, eliciting several reactions from travelers and store owners who mocked the state of infrastructure at the facility. 
This is Moritala Mohamed Airport, Nigeria, and today's date is the 2nd of February 2024. They have just taken the light at the airport. There is no there is power outage at the airport, so you can imagine what it looks like. At an international airport, there is no power running, no light. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Of course, you can understand the frustration of the travelers, but Fan uh, put out a tweet immediately, actually, responding, saying, update. We experienced a two to three minute outage at the Moratala Mohammed International Airport yesterday, February 2nd, 2024, while switching over to our backup power supply after losing power from the grid. The electrical team has identified the challenges with the automatic switchover and working judiciously to restore this immediately. We have put a plan in place, leveraging the alternative sources of power to ensure we do not have a recurrence. I thought that this was a good tweet and I thought that they responded swiftly, which was quite important. But you could, you know, you could hear the frustration of Nigerians, you know, coming out to say that this is horrible happening in Nigeria but it's not only in Nigeria this happens last year I believe I saw you know a report um, you know in in the UK of a, of a blackout and it, it, it disrupted a lot of services so it does happen across what I guess the frustration is the fact that it is a common occurrence yeah and I think this in is Nigeria. about social media, yes. OJ. The fact that people can be put on the spot. In the past, when things like this would happen, it would take a while for people to even know yes. that such a, such a thing happened. So we have citizens who are keeping in check our national institutions. And one of the things I must commend and fan for doing, like you said, is coming out very swiftly to give yeah. a reason and to explain the circumstances of things. However, I do believe that um, this also points to a bigger challenge that we have in the nation with regards to power supply and how this can cause embarrassment to um, Nigeria Nigerians. Um, the incident that happened at Hisu Airport, I think happened early January and was early in the morning. They'd said that the disruption to flights and um, operations was quite minimal and that it was just a section, a portion of the um, airports that had en encountered a blackout. I'd seen comments around, oh, let's compare ourselves to England. But when we have challenges, I think we should desist from comparing ourselves and saying that, oh, other people are doing it too, so we can get away with it. That's not, that's not our focus, that's not our aim. So I'm hoping that as a lesson from from this FM fan would put in measures as they've said the automatic switchover had a challenge mm. to ensure that this doesn't occur again that's what we look forward to not to compare ourselves to say well other people did it so we are fine mistakes to happen but let it not happen again well said I we'll take another story over the weekend the Super Eagles of Nigeria defeated Angola 1-0 to become the first team to book a place in the semi-final of the ongoing Africa Cup of Nations in Ivory Coast while during the game presidential candidate of the Labour Party Peter Obi was spotted wearing traditional green and white jersey of the Super Eagles cheering and dancing along with fans at the stadium I have a God who never fails. And he didn't fail. I have a God yes. who never. I knew I was going to ginger this woman with this dance move. Of course. <laughs> Our pastor, I okay, this camera guy. Well, all right. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was also spotted in a video celebrating the Eagles' victory with friends and family in France. <laughs> Too much excitement in that room. Well, after the game, the Super Eagle stars were seen celebrating their victory with the captain of the team, Ahmed Musa, who is a devoted Muslim leading a Christian chorus. Let's take a look.
I mean, this was beautiful to see, Dr. Vati. I always speak about what sports brings to the table, the camaraderie, the beauty in sports. That's what it is, Dr. Vati, really quickly. Well, the beauty of football. Yes, the beautiful game. And how yeah. football yeah. has become for Nigerians a religion. Yes. It's not only in Brazil uh, or in Colombia that they worship football. We also worship football here in Nigeria. And when it comes to football, religion, ethnicity, uh, all of those things that ordinarily divide us do not make any uh, difference. And it's good for the super egos themselves to see the level of support that they are getting. Presidential candidates going to watch them. The whole of the, uh, of the Senate committees, the National Assembly Committees on Sports, mm -hmm. they were also out there. Uh, football legends, they were all out there to support them. And, you know, apart from uh, uh, Peter B, yes. I thought I also saw Goswila Pabio, yes. the Senate president, also out there in the stands to cheer up uh, the Super Eagles. The Super Eagles should justify that by just bringing the trophy home. Yes. Finally, <laughs> Ahmed Musa, who is a Muslim, yeah. uh, leading a chorus. You know how it is. There are many of these, uh, uh, you know, there are many Christians, you know, uh, who, are, who, who started out from Muslim colleges and who can read the Quran, can worship very well in the Quranic manner. And there are many Muslims who also attended uh, Christian secondary schools and, you know, understand what Christians do. Yes. You know, so, I mean, where, in the real sense, you know, a, you know, a united society, mm -hmm. is only when people want to play politics with religion. Yes. That they will say, oh, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, or I'm a traditional African worshiper. So there are many like Ahmed Musa, who, by the way, I think is from Kaduna State, mm -hmm. you know, where you have both Christians and uh, Muslims together. But what is important is that we have at least one thing that we can point to as a source of national unity. Yes, congratulations, yeah. the super eagles, and just beautiful to see such unity. Mm -hmm. I hope we can take this forward and know that it's important for us to be tolerant. Yes. We can live together, coexisting, different religious beliefs, but still loving one another and pursuing you know, the good of the nation. Absolutely. So congratulations to the super Absolutely. eagles. Well, like I said, before we end what's trending, I did say that Nigeria was fully represented at the Grammys. Shall we take a look? at Bonoboy's performance at the Grammys. He's a Grammy-winning sensation originally from Nigeria. Please welcome Bonoboy. Congratulations, Burner Boy. That was uh, um, Brandy right there, right? Yes, <laughs> Performing with Burner Boy. What can we say? Again, a round of applause to our five Nigerian artists that made that inaugural category of Best African Performer of the Year. Congratulations. Well, I'd like to thank you both for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.